Welcome fearless viewers, to another chilling tale from our realm of horror. Tonight, we delve into the darkest corners of the human psyche, where shadows lurk and fear reigns supreme. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our channel and join our growing community of horror enthusiasts. Help us reach our next milestone of 700 subscribers, as we continue to uncover spine-tingling stories that will haunt your dreams. Now, brace yourself, as the journey into the unknown begins. A couple of years ago when I was in college, something scary happened to me as I was playing video games. Many nights if I didn't have homework, or even if I did have homework for that matter, I would play video games in my room. I lived in a small house with one other roommate that we rented together. The house was older and somewhat run down. There were two bedrooms and a bathroom upstairs, and a living room and kitchen downstairs. That was basically it. I met my roommate Kevin in the dorms the previous year, we lived across the hall from each other, and also had a couple of classes together. We became pretty good friends. And it worked out well for us to rent the house together. I remember that semester, we also had a class together as well. But other than that our schedules were a little bit different. We will be gone at different times of the day sometimes, and with school, it can get pretty busy. One night after a long day of classes and homework, I decided to unwind and play some Call of Duty. The time was probably about 9 p.m. or so, and it was dark outside. I had been locked away in my room for at least the past three hours, trying to get an assignment done. And thankfully, I had been able to finish it. I put on my headset and started gaming. I played a few rounds, and I remember that between a round I thought I heard a banging on my door. My headset didn't allow me to hear very well, because it covered my ears entirely. When I was playing, there was no chance I was hearing anything. So now after hearing someone banging on my bedroom door, I assumed it was Kevin. I took off my headset to hear the tail end of it before it stopped. I told Kevin to come in. But he didn't. He didn't even answer me. After a few seconds, I got up from my chair and walked over to the door. When I opened it, I did not see Kevin out in the hallway. No one was there. I walked over to Kevin's room, still thinking that it was him who had knocked, because who else would it be? I then knocked on his door, which was closed. But he didn't answer me. I thought about just walking into his room, but decided not to. Maybe he had gone downstairs. I then walked downstairs and checked all around the house. But Kevin wasn't there. I figured he must be in his room and I went back into my bedroom. I sat back down at my chair to continue gaming. I played Call of Duty for the next probably 30 minutes or so. I was right in the middle of a round. When for some reason I thought I saw something out of the corner of my eye. My TV and gaming chair that I was sitting in was at the right corner of my room. And directly to the left on the other side was the bedroom door. It seemed to be moving. Of course I couldn't hear anything due to my headset being on. I looked over and saw my bedroom door slowly opening. It was extremely slow and deliberate and it really creeped me out. Outside of my room. It was dark because all the lights were off. We often kept the lights off to save on the electricity bill. I could barely see part of someone for just a second before they moved away. My door was now open like three or four inches. And it had been completely closed before I got the chills from seeing this. I was hoping that it was Kevin though, but I just had a bad feeling like it wasn't him for some reason. I picked up my phone and sent Kevin a Snapchat asking him if he was home. He responded pretty quickly saying no, he was at the school gym working out. My creeped out feeling got 10 times worse. Somebody was in our house and I didn't know who or why my mind started racing. And I was afraid the person inside might be dangerous. I couldn't bring myself to leave my room. It seemed like a big risk to me. I had no kind of weapons or anything. I told Kevin about the situation and he said that I should leave if I can. But I was on the second floor. So that would be difficult. 
After several minutes of sitting in my chair and thinking of what to do, I got up and carefully closed my door again. It was then that I thought I heard the sound of somebody walking around downstairs in our house. Whoever was there was now in the kitchen area. I walked back over to my chair and sat down. To be honest with you, the thought of calling the police did not pop into my head at that time. I couldn't tell you why, but it just didn't as dumb as that may sound. I was just focused on somehow trying to get out of there. I considered trying to jump from my window or something, but I knew that wouldn't work. For probably 20 minutes or so. I was inside my bedroom, just hoping that the person wouldn't come back. Finally, I got up and walked over to the door. I stood there listening to hear the person walking around downstairs like before something, but I didn't, I couldn't hear anything. Things were now completely silent. I stayed there for probably 10 minutes listening. When I didn't hear anything the entire time, I decided that I was going to run for it. I opened the door and ran downstairs without looking back. When I got downstairs, I went for the front door. I didn't see anybody inside the entire time. And then after leaving the house, ran from my car and got inside. After locking my car doors, I finally felt safe. Not more than a minute later though. Kevin pulled up behind me. We didn't have a driveway, and we parked on the street. He got out of his car and started to walk inside the house. And I got out of my car and told him that the guy might still be in there. But with Kevin out here, I wasn't as scared as I was before. Because I wasn't alone. I decided to go inside the house with him. When we both opened the door, we yelled, whoever was inside needed to leave. If we heard a noise, we would both be able to run back for our cars. But there was just silence. Slowly, one by one, we turned on each light in the house and searched every room. The place was not very big, so it didn't take too long. Soon, we found that whoever had been inside was gone. Nobody was in there. I never found out who it was. And I don't think they ever came back. Nothing was stolen either. Possibly because we were two broke college guys who didn't have anything worth stealing. I think the guy was already gone when I ran out of my room. Also, how he got inside was pretty easy. It was most likely because Kevin and I were always coming and going from the house and rarely bothered to lock the doors. Obviously, that changed after this experience. This is something that happened a long time ago, back when I was a kid. I think I was probably like 7 or 8. And it was sometime in the early 2000s. Back then we would sometimes have family gatherings at one of my aunt's house, I had several aunts and uncles who lived in the area. And I had a few cousins as well. This auntie in particular, probably had the biggest house that was also in a good location and there was a decent amount of land on her property to steal. We wouldn't go to her place for all get-togethers, just some of them. I don't even know the occasions of them, because I don't remember ever being there for a holiday. I really liked to go to her house though, because there were all kinds of fun things to do. She had a really big yard and a couple of four-wheelers. There was also a volleyball court on her property. And inside of the house, she had big TVs upstairs and in the basement and had a GameCube I would play the GameCube with my cousins a lot. And sometimes we would watch movies as well. During that time as a kid, obviously I loved video games, but we didn't actually have any yet at my house. So one time my parents' brother and I went to my aunt's house. Several other family members were there also a couple of my cousins, aunts, and uncles. I don't remember a whole lot of what we did earlier in the day. I do remember though, that we had food upstairs. And afterwards we were going to watch a movie on the large TV upstairs. Unfortunately for me, it was a movie that I had recently seen at a friend's house. I'm pretty sure it was The Scorpion King, and it had recently come out on DVD. I liked the movie, but I was more in the mood to play video games. We were all sitting on the couches and chairs that were upstairs in the living room. Some kids like me were even sitting on the floor. Shortly after the movie started, I kind of had to use the bathroom. 
and I decided to go downstairs and use the one in the basement because it was more private. As I was downstairs, I couldn't help myself and I walked over to the basement living room where the GameCube was. Nobody else was down there and I decided to just play some GameCube I was sure that nobody would mind. I sat down on this weird gaming chair that they had pretty close to the TV. Then I turned on the GameCube and TV and put in a Mario game. The basement living room was at the bottom of the stairs and to the left. Inside, there were two large couches and a couple of other chairs facing the TV. To the left of the TV, there was a sliding glass door that opened up to the backyard. All of the lights downstairs were also off, things were only lit up a little bit by the TV screen. I could hear the sound coming from the TV upstairs from them watching the movie. And I kept the volume low on the TV that I was using. Soon I was playing on the GameCube and having the time of my life. This only lasted for probably about 15 minutes though. I remember thinking that I heard a noise coming from outside. I looked over but saw nothing and assumed it was my aunt or another family member outside for some reason. After that I kept playing on the game queue. But only about a minute later, I heard more noise and then heard the sliding glass door opening. I looked over expecting to see a family members. But instead, I saw some random guy entering the house. The sliding door hadn't even been locked. I don't remember much about how the man looked or what he was wearing, just that he had kind of long hair. He was still kind of far away from me. And after seeing the guy, I instantly got up and ran for the stairs. I went all the way up and everybody saw me come running into the living room. Someone jokingly asked me what I was in a hurry for. I said to everyone how a man had just entered the basement from the sliding door. At first it wasn't taken very serious. People thought that I must have seen a family member that I didn't recognize, or possibly a neighbor who had come over a lot. But after some talking, I remember that the movie was paused and a couple of people ended up going downstairs to check it out. The rest of the night is kind of blurry to me in my memory. I just know that after coming back upstairs, most of us had to go into the two bedrooms that were upstairs and the police were called, we had to wait for them in the bedrooms. And I know that the man was gone when the police got there, but I'm not sure if he had left before the basement was investigated or after. I'm also not sure if he stole or damaged anything. I didn't go back down to the basement that night at all. But eventually, the police left and we were able to finish the movie. This remains probably the creepiest thing that's ever happened to me. A few years ago, I played a lot of video games, I've always kind of been on and off with gaming. I'll play quite a bit for like a month or two and then go a long time barely playing at all. Overall, I'm just not very consistent and just depends on how busy I am and stuff. This was probably back in like 2018 or 19. And I was playing Fortnite a lot as well as some other games. I played on a PlayStation 4. And sometimes we'd play with friends online. However, most of my PlayStation friends were random people who I'd played with in the past, and they sent me a friend request or something. I didn't actually know them in real life. One time when I logged on to my PlayStation, I had another friend request. I had no idea who it actually was. And I don't even remember the username at all. But I did what I always did, and I accepted it. Then I started playing. Maybe like 30 minutes later, I got a request to join a game on Fortnite. It was from the person who I just accepted the friend request from earlier. I accepted the request to join them in the game because I figured why not. When we started playing, I saw that the other person had a microphone, but they weren't saying anything. I had one as well. And I asked some general questions about the game because we were playing duos. If you don't know, that means we were on the same team. I questions went unanswered though, I figured that either their headset was not on their head. Or maybe it was broken. That was not all that uncommon. I stopped talking to them after it was apparent that they weren't going to talk to me. I still didn't know who it was though. And I assumed that it was just a random person that I must have played with some time before. We played around and lost fairly quickly. Then we decided to play another. 
This time, maybe five minutes into the new round, the person finally spoke. It was a man's voice, which was extremely deep. I think they might have even been using some kind of voice changer. The voice sounded very creepy. The guy said my real name immediately, which got my attention. It was followed by a crazy sounding rant that started out absurd and then got threatening. I don't even remember any of the specific things because it was so crazy. After he paused, he started talking again and said something like, if you don't think I'm serious, I know much more than just your name. I was already very creeped out. The guidance said the city that I lived in and the state and this was enough for me. I hit the power button to my PlayStation and it turned off. Then I went so far as to unplug it from the wall. My heart was racing and I was no sweating. I wondered who that person was and what had just happened. Eventually, after about 10 minutes or so, I composed myself. I turned my PlayStation back on and located the person for my friends list. I saw that he had sent me several messages now. I clicked on one and it was more of the same stuff. I didn't want to read any of the rest. I reported and blocked him and then got off of my PlayStation. After this, nothing else happened. No, he didn't show up at my house or call me on the phone or anything. At least not that I'm aware of. But this still creeped me out quite a bit. So much so that I didn't play any video games for a while after that. Years later, and I still wonder who it was. I played many video games since and nothing like this has ever happened. I don't know if it was a prank either, because nobody I know ever said anything about it. And I would think that they would have by now. Besides, my friends aren't really the type to do that remains a mystery to me. When I was a kid, my best friend's name was Kenneth, but everyone called him Kenny. We're still friends to this day. Not as close as before, but we still hang out occasionally. And around the age of 12. My favorite thing to do was hang out at each other's houses and play video games. He played many different kinds from racing to sports or whatever. He had an Xbox at his house and I had a PlayStation in mind. One day I went over to Kenny's to hang out. He had an older sister, but I remember that she was gone at one of her friend's houses at the time. Kenny's house was one level and his bedroom was at the far back end and faced the backyard. I remember that we started playing video games in Kenny's room early in the evening. His parents then left shortly after, I think to go out to dinner, but I can't remember for sure if that was it. Anyways, Kenny and I will be left home alone, which wasn't that big of a deal, because we weren't too young. Kenny knew how to make a frozen pizza, which is what we were planning on aching later. In the middle of playing video games, probably about 15 minutes or so after Kenny's parents left, there was a knocking on the front door. Kenny's neighborhood was fairly quiet and not in the city or anything. So it was sort of unusual to get people knocking on the door. I only lived a few miles away from Kenny in the same general area. So I knew it was a little bit strange. Plus, looking back, it was probably a little after 7 p.m. and the sun was setting. This meant it was probably not a salesman or something like that. We paused the game and were curious as to who it was. Kenny and I left his bedroom and walked through the house to the front door. We looked out and saw a man standing there on the front step. He was wearing a t-shirt and blue jeans. And he then knocked on the door again. You didn't look very professional or anything. To me. It looked like maybe it was one of Kenny's neighbors. I asked him if it was one of his neighbors. And he said no. To my surprise. Kenny then opened up the door and answered it for the guy. I personally would not have done that. And I didn't think that he would either. After opening up the door, the man said hi to Kenny and told him that his parents were expecting him. Kenny said that his parents were gone and left a while ago. Demand and asked Kenny if he could come inside and wait for them until they got back. He said that they knew he was coming and everything. Can you said no to this and then started to close the door. The guy then asked when his parents would be back. And Kenny just said that he wasn't sure. Then he closed the door. 
After closing it and locking it, we watched and soon the man finally began walking away. Then Kenny and I went back to keep playing video games. I was sitting on the floor to the right of the TV in Kenny's room and he was sitting on the floor to the left. There was a window sort of behind his TV, which I had a better angle of seeing out. Maybe 10 minutes after we had resumed gaming, I was sure that I saw the man walk past out the window. Obviously I only saw him for like a second. But to see him in the backyard was really weird. I paused the game and Kenny asked me what I was doing. I asked him if he saw the guy out the window and I told him that I had seen him walking past. Ken. He hadn't though, but he believed me. We both went over to the window and looked out. We couldn't really see anything though. There were trees and bushes, and we didn't have a good view of the whole backyard. Plus, it was dark out. We started talking to each other wondering who that guy even was. He seemed pretty sketchy. Ken he then called his parents and asked if they were expecting the guy. His parents were not expecting anybody. And they said that they were now coming home. We were both really creeped out and made sure that every door was locked and every window was shot. Then we turned on every single light in the house. We didn't see or hear anything more from the guy. And Kenny's parents got home a short time later. They looked around the property a little bit but didn't see the man. I remember that my mom came and picked me up not too long after that. I couldn't stop thinking about how we potentially avoided a very dangerous situation, Ken you should have never opened the door to that guy. And we're lucky that he didn't force his way in what his intentions were, I have no clue. And then walking in the backyard was very suspicious as well. Most likely he was looking for a way to break in. And luckily he didn't.